Today is Children and Youth Sunday, and we are so excited. Just like Sister Cheryl said, we are so excited to see our young people in the house. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We are so grateful for each and every one of them. Let's continue to pray for them. I want you to encourage them. And I want you to remind them every now and then that God knows who they are. God knows their name. He hears their cry. And he will always provide. And his provision is often in ways they cannot even imagine. So let's continue to pray for our young people. Today, right now we will have a selection by the choir followed by scripture from my, Mia Lewis and prayer from Miles Payne in that order. Mic check. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are. I give you glory because of who you are. I give you praise because of who you are. I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who. Because of who you
Good morning, Trinity. Today's scripture will be coming from Acts 16, verse 25 through 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosened. The word of God to the people of God. Thank you. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for bringing us here today, Lord. I just want to thank you for all the things you have bestowed in our lives to make us greater, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you for continuing to keep us and bless us over the years, Lord. Even through these trying times, Lord, you're always with us, Lord. Continue to be with the youth because you know, Lord, we need it, Lord. All the stuff we go through every day, Lord, we just know we need you every day, Lord. Continue to bless this church family, Lord. You have kept us this long. Continue to do it, Lord. Father, name of Jesus, I just want, to, want you to be with my family, Lord. Be with all of us, Lord. Continue to strengthen us day in and day out, Lord. I just want to thank you for bringing us here safely, giving us trials and mercies to make it to this church, Lord, this morning for these children, Lord. Father, I just thank you for everything you bestowed in my life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Amen. We thank God for the young people. At this time, we will have words of encouragement from Samaya Tucker, followed by reflections from their trip to the National Baptist Deacons Convention by Jelana Collins, and then the introduction of our preacher for the morning by Asa Tucker, in that order. Good morning. My name is Samaya Tucker, and I'm happy to give words of encouragement to the children and youth of Trinity. We all enjoy winning. Some of us, just like the girls saying, we're number one. And others want the reward that often comes with it. Whatever the reason, wanting, reason for wanting to win, it does not just happen. We have to do something to receive the prize. Simone Biles did not win the gold medal just because of her smile and powerful gymnastics routines. Camilla Harris did not become the first female vice president of the United States just because she got lots of votes. Perini Logan did not win the 22 scripts National Spelling Bee just because she spelled a few words correctly. And I did not pass the eighth grade just because it is the next grade after seven. In all of these examples, it took years of practicing, planning, sacrificing, studying, failures, good days, bad days, lots of discipline, and it took having a goal. You see, you can't just start a sport, a political campaign, a major project, or even the first day of school without having a goal in mind that you want to achieve. And the goal does not always have to be coming in first. Maybe you just want to finish whatever your reason may be. Give it everything you've got. God has a purpose for everyone. We all have greatness inside of us. When we accept Jesus into our heart, we, when we acknowledge God and do our very best, it pleases him and he rewards us with more chances to succeed. So young people set goals, study and work hard, and always think about Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 from the International Children's Bible. Remember the Lord in everything you do, and he will give you success. Thank you. Okay, good morning, church. So one thing that I really enjoyed about the convention was the workshops. They allowed me to have open and honest discussions with other youth close to my age, and I think it's really important to acknowledge the perspectives of others, especially when they come from different backgrounds than you do. Really quick, thank you to everyone who supported our youth and allowed us to be able to go on this trip. Thank you. also known as DJ, is a native of West Point, Virginia. He was born to the parents of Kate Jackson and Daniel Harvey Sr. In an effort to assist Daniel's parents in raising him, his maternal grandmother, Margaret Harvey, poured much love and wisdom into him and began to claim him as her very own child. Daniel is a graduate of high, West, high school, West Point High School at the age of 14. He confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior and joined First Mount Olive Baptist Church in Newtown, Virginia. As a child growing up, he didn't play the average childhood games, but most of the time, his mother and grandmother would often observe Daniel preaching and singing to his stuffed animals. He is a very proud father of Makai Josiah Harvey. Daniel had a clear understanding that there was a call and a great assign assignment to fulfill in his life. And it has always been his desire to for the, a deeper relationship with God. Daniel is a proud member of Cedar Street Baptist Church of God in Richmond, Virginia, where he was licensed to preach the gospel June 3rd, 2016 under 
the leadership of his pastor, Dan, Dr. Anthony Michael Chandler, Sr. At Cedar Street, Daniel is the minister for children and youth. Each Sunday, he conducts Kingdom Kids worship. He is also the ministry leader for my ministry for children and seniors. Daniel is employed as an administrative officer in the FDA in Silver Spring, MD, and employed at Centera Health Plan. Daniel has great love for God, people, and living life to the fullest. His favorite scripture is John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you find peace. In this world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we thank God for this youth choir behind me? Amen. Amen. First, giving honor to God, who is truly the head of my life. I bring you greetings from the Cedar Street Baptist Church of God, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Michael Anthony Chandler Sr. And I ask that you continue to pray for us as we go through this season of transition. Amen. Amen. And can we give this champion of a preacher, your pastor, A. Lincoln James, a hand clap. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. 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 Pastor James came to Cedar Street last week and tore it up. And we thank God for him. I am strengthened by the presence. I have a lot of family here. Uh, my uncle Don Jose Horton and my aunt Shirley here. I got Uncle Charles and Aunt Deborah here. I got my godmother, Miss Zenobia Dabney here. I got a best friend, Mr. T.J. Walker here. And then I come in and find out that Deacon Thomas Harvey is my cousin. <laughs> which is a blessing, so I feel like I'm at home, amen? Amen. So I want to get to the word. Does anybody need a word from the Lord this morning? Amen, amen, amen. And my coworker, Miss Tammy, wow, so I feel real good, amen, amen. Um, but there is a word from the Lord in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 26, and it says, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Just for a few moments, I would like to come from the subject, I still have hope. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day and this time, God. God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk, God. God, I pray that you hide me behind the shadows of your cross, Lord God, that your people will not see or hear me, but they will see and hear Jesus. Anoint me afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Miss Winnie, for reaching out to me. Amen. I still have hope. Growing up, I can remember hearing my grandmother say, it's always something. Or she would say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Amen. Now that I'm a little bit older, I've been through some things, and I'm beginning to understand what she meant especially with everything that's happening in the world today. See, it doesn't matter if what news station you watch, if it's ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, or Fox, there's always something going on. And if it's not the increased numbers of people getting COVID-19, it's monkeypox. And if it's not that, it's mass shootings or police brutality, or it's black on black crime, or it's the stipulations that the governments are putting on our black communities concerning voting rights, or it's now the country telling women what they can and cannot do concerning their body, or it's global warming, or it is the concern of weapons of mass destruction and nuclear bombs. It's always something going on. But regardless of his always being something going on, I still have hope that better days are coming. My hope, my hope is not predicated on what's happening in the world, but my hope is based on what I know for myself, that God will make a way and that God is still able to provide. See, I tried him for myself and I found out that he never sleeps 
nor slumbers. He walks with me and he talks with me and he loves on me and he keeps me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. That is what my hope is built on. Paul and Silas knew something about having hope. Prior to our text, Paul and Silas were headed to pray, and they were interrupted by a slave girl who was a fortune teller. She had a good way of telling fortunes, and she was so good at it that she was able to bring money back to her masters. This slave girl began to harass Paul and Silas, and she would shout out, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim the way of salvation salvation. She did this for many days. Then one day she had gotten on Paul's nerves so bad he had enough. Has anybody ever gotten on your last nerves? If you're sitting beside someone who does, just keep looking at me. Amen. You're trying to do what you have to do, but people begin to get on your last nerves, always doing the most, interrupting your day, being, uh, being nosy, asking one and a thousand questions, coming into your space, being disrespectful. That has the tendency to get on your nerves. Paul and Silas were on an assignment and they were praying and this slave girl was doing nothing but stirring up trouble. Paul gets agitated and rebukes the spirit that is in the girl and he commands the spirit to come out of her in the name of Jesus and she was instantly delivered. Now, the problem here is because the slave girl can no longer make money because she's been delivered and she can no longer tell people their fortunes. So the masters take Paul and Silas to authorities and explain to them that Paul and Silas are affecting their business. Paul and Silas is the reason that their cash flow has stopped. So a riot starts and the authorities tore up Paul and Silas's clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods and thrown in prison. I said in the beginning, isn't it always something? Isn't it something how life can interrupt and switch on you? Isn't it something how you're doing something one day and before the day is over, there's been a change of plans. You are in a situation that is outside of your control. You're doing the best that you can in this life, but when you make two steps forward, you get pushed back five. You can't win for losing. You find yourself between a rock and a hard place. If it's not problems on the job, it's problems in your household. If it's not financial issues, it's health issues. Life can put you in three places. Either you're in in a storm or you're coming out of a storm or you're on your way in to a storm. But I come to encourage you this morning, Trinity, to be not dismayed, whatever be tied, because God will take care of you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Even though we walk through valleys of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear no evil because God is with us. He promised to be with us until the end of the earth. He is a present help in the time of trouble. Life will have its ups and downs. But Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world, we're going to have tribulations. In this world, your heart going to get broken sometimes. In this world, you're going to get frustrated sometimes. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You have to know that the Lord is your light and your salvation. You have to know 
that the, pres the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in Christ Jesus. No matter what you're going through, just hold on because help is on the way. Keep looking up to the hills where your help comes from. David said, lift up your head, all ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors so the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. In our text this morning, it says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, and the prisoners were listening, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loosed. What do you do when you're about to lose hope? The Lord told me to give you these three points just like this. Number one, you need to pray with anticipation. Praise with determination and wait with expectation. What do you do when you're losing sight of hope? You have to pray with anticipation. Verse 25 says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Paul and Silas were locked up in prison. They were not asking for their one phone call. They were not asking to speak to their lawyer, but they were praying to the almighty God. In the time of trouble, you have to know who to run to. It's good to talk to your mama. It's good to talk to your daddy. It's good to confide in friends. It's even good to go to therapy. It's good to ask the preacher to pray for you. It's good to ask the deacon to pray for you. But every now and then, you have to learn how to pray for yourself. Every now and then, you got to go in your secret closet and get down on your knees and pray to God because just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right does anybody know that prayer changes things prayer will even change you when you pray you should pray with anticipation pray like you know God hears you and that he's working that thing out for your good the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous avail of much David said I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears Paul and Silas were praying with anticipation knowing that soon Sooner or later, the Lord was going to work it out for their good. They were praying with anticipation because they understood that God had a plan for their life. They were praying with anticipation because they understood that if he did it before, that God is able to do it again. Paul and Silas were praying with anticipation because they knew that there would be glory after this. They were praying with anticipation because they had their hope in the Lord Jesus because they understood that he has never turned his back on them. He's understood that there was no failure in God. Paul and Silas were praying with anticipation knowing that if God be for them, they are more than a world against them. We have to learn how to pray with anticipation knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. Pray with anticipation anticipation, knowing that God has given us the power to speak to our mountains, and our mountains have to move. We have to pray with anticipation. Pray like you're ready to start a fight with the devil, knowing that you will win. You have to pray with anticipation. But what do you do when you're losing sight of hope? Pray with anticipation but praise with determination. Praise with determination. Verse 25 reminds us that Paul and Silas uh, were praying and singing hymns to God. Isn't it amazing? Even in the time of trouble, they never lost their praise. 
you know, they were singing their song that was on their heart. Heart. Paul and Silas were still able to give God glory in a dark place. If you need the Lord to come see about you, you have to open up your mouth and give him a praise of determination. I don't mind praising my God. I don't mind sending up a praise to set off an alarm in heaven. I don't mind giving God the glory because he's worthy to be praised. I stopped by this morning to encourage you. Don't lose your praise. Don't give up on God. Don't let the devil shut you up. Don't let your problems put a pause on your praise. Every now and then, you got to break out with a I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Every now and then, you got to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Every now and then, you got to give God glory. Every now and then, you got to say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. In the time of trouble, you got to give God praise of determination. Because you see, your praise will confuse the enemy. Because he's trying to figure out how can you still give God praise and you are going through what you're going through. But what the enemy fails to realize is that praise is what we were created to do. The enemy failed to realize that for God I live and for God I'll die. Our praise is not predicated on whether we're going to have a good day. But our praise is because God is God. God is good. And God God is worthy to be praised. The Bible says they were singing hymns to God. I don't know what they were singing, but if I could think about it, maybe they were singing hymn number 248. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth unmoved can stand, but build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to God's unchanging hand. They could have turned the page to hymn number 249. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real. Or they could have sung hymn number 189. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot has taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Or they could have sung hymn number 325. We are often tossed and driven by the restless sea of times. Some bright skies are howling tempests, often succeed the sunshine. But in that land, a perfect day when the mist have rolled away, we'll understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered and thrown, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Or he could have sung hymn number 411, how to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. 
Whatever song they were singing, it got God's attention. This is why we have to praise with determination. Whatever your song is, sing it to the glory of God. I just wish somebody would help me give God praise right now. I wish somebody would just help me lift up Jesus right now. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men men unto me. When, what do you do when you're losing sight of hope? One, you have to pray with anticipation. Praise with determination. But lastly, wait with expectation. Wait with expectation. Verse 26 says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. After this prayer and praise and worship experience, they were having down in the jail. Something happened. Isn't it amazing how our prayer and praise grabs God's attention? It grabs his attention. The Bible says, uh, suddenly there was an earthquake. Uh, for a quick science lesson, during an earthquake, tectonic plates meet and glide against each other. The quake occurs when frictional stress and movement exceeds the strength of rocks, causing failure at the fault line. Well, I don't know what that means, but what I do know that this earthquake was a divine interruption by God. There it was a shifting in the atmosphere that provoked heaven to suddenly answer their call. The jail doors were open and everybody's chains were loose. That is the answer for your problem. That is the antidote for the situation that you're going through right now. If we learn to pray with anticipation, learn to praise with determination, and if we sit down and wait with expectation, God will show up. God will show out. Won't he do it? We just have to wait and expect God to perform a miracle for our lives today. Wait on him, expecting that he will see us through. Wait on him, expecting that the victory shall be won. David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. The Bible says, be still the Lord and wait patiently for him. The Bible says, I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits in his word. I have hope. The Bible says, lead me in the truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I will wait for you all the day long. While we're waiting, we have to wait with expectation. Sarah and Abraham had to wait with expectation all the way until they turned about a hundred or something. Before they had their baby, Isaac was born. Job was faithful to God and lost everything that he had, but he waited with expectation, knowing that God gave him double for his trouble. Daniel was in the lion's den all night, but he waited with expectation, knowing that God was going to bring him out. The woman with the issue of blood had to wait with expectation for 12 long years, but she figured if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. The blind man heard that Jesus was passing by, and he said, Jesus, Put your hands on my eyes so I can see. Jesus, put your hand on my body so I can be healed. Paul and Silas had to wait all night praying and praising and waiting with expectation for God to come and see about them. And suddenly, 
God showed up with a supernatural way that the earth had to move. Even Jesus had to wait with expectation in the garden of Gethsemane, knowing what was about to happen. They, he said, destroy this temple, but within three days, uh, I will raise it up. Uh, they marched my Jesus uh, to Calvary's hill. He was beaten, uh, mocked, and scorned all night long. Uh, they pierced him in his hands and in his feet and his side. Somebody said, surely he died for you and for me. He waited in the grave uh, all night Friday. He waited in the grave uh, all day. Saturday, but early Sunday morning, God showed up uh, and he showed out. Uh, early Sunday morning, he got up with power over death, uh, hell, and the grave. This is why I still uh, have hope. Uh, hope for tomorrow. Hope in the time of sorrow. Hope in the time of trouble. I still have hope. So with the licking, I'm going to keep on ticking. Hope that he will fight my battles. Hope that the victory shall be won. After all uh, I've been through, I have not uh, lost my praise. After all I've been through, I still have hope. I still have hope. I still have hope.